everyone and welcome to the first edition of Cars Tour Today. I'm your host, Tony Stevens, and we have got a lot to get through in today's short program. We've got a preview of the season opener at Southern National, recap some of the biggest off-season news for the Cars Tour, and hit on some of the new teams and drivers expected to compete with us in 2016. But before we do any of that, let's first get to the latest Cars Tour off-season news. One of the biggest pieces of news from the off-season was the announcement of a title sponsor for the Cars Super Late Model Tour. In a three-year agreement, BP Racing Fuel has become title sponsor of the series and has also extended their partnership as the exclusive fuel provider for the Cars Tour for the same period of time. The tour-specific BP CRT Fuel will be run by all competitors at each tour stop this season. BP's support of the series doesn't stop at their title sponsorship of the Super Late Mile Division. In fact, the largest piece of off-season news was the announcement of the Cars Tour Loyalty Program. Competitors who display an effort to support the series, whether they consistently run 1st or 21st, will be rewarded with free fuel from VP and free tires from series tire provider Hoosier Racing Tire. Any team who attempts to qualify for every event in 2016 will be eligible for the awards that begin at race number six, the Greenville Pickens event. As you'd expect, Car Store teams and drivers are very excited about this loyalty program. They're about the drivers, and you don't find many series nowadays that do that. And this loyalty program for us, it, it'll allow us to, like I said, keep that extra level of, um, of being competitive throughout the whole season, you know, that, that free tire could help us save us some money that we could put somewhere else in the car or, um, you know, the free fuel, any of it just, it just helps little teams like us be able to come to the racetrack and know that we have a chance to win no matter what and go out there and be the best we can be. Anything that anybody does for me is, is good. <laughs> so we'll take it as we can get it. Uh Ford Motor Company has also stepped up their support of the tour in 2016. As a follow-up to Hoosier and VP's commitment to the Cars Loyalty Program, Ford is offering a loyalty bonus of their own to late-mile stock competitors in the amount of $300 per race. This award is also aimed at giving back to those who run Ford power plants in their race cars, no matter if they run 1st or 31st on a weekly basis. Finally, the Cars Tour announced an expansion of their digital footprint during the annual media day at SRI Performance. A Roku app is being explored and in development for the series, giving teams and sponsors the opportunity to be exposed to over 15 million new households. That's how many households Roku claims as their subscriber base and is the fastest growing digital streaming content platform on the market today. Finally, it's that time. It seems like we've waited an eternity for this time of the calendar. It's the first race week of the Cars Racing Tour in 2016, this weekend at Southern National Motorsports Park. Now, what can we expect for this season opener? If the brief history of the series is any indication, we can expect the unexpected. Take, for instance, one year ago, Cole Tim shocked the racing world by sitting on the pole and dominating the 150 lap super late model feature over budding superstar Christopher Bell. And that win launched him to the 2016 Cars Super Late Model Championship. On the late mile stock side, a very similar story. A relative unknown at the time, Todd Gilliland, did just the same thing. Came in and snatched victory from Deke McCaskill late in the race to win the inaugural Cars Late Mile Stock event at Southern National Motorsports Park. So this weekend, I really couldn't do it all myself, so I dialed up my friend Matt Weaver from Short Track Scene, and we bounced a few ideas off of one another. Hey Matt, thanks for coming on for a few minutes here on our inaugural edition of Cars Tour today. First question, what in the world do you think we can expect at Southern National? I expect the real best first race of the year. Um, you know, the Cars Tour last year, 10 races, technically 20 races, 10 events, routinely put on some of the best racing and short track racing, bar none, and I expect much of the same. You're going to see many of the familiar names that we saw last year 
a couple more fresh faces. I think you combine all that together in a blender, and you're going to have one of the shows that people talk about here for the next couple of weeks. Matt, you're very in tune to the short track world, and I tend to agree with you. Mind you, I'm a little biased because obviously, you know, working with the series, we get real excited about what happens, but it seems like there's a real big buzz about everything we did last year and what's coming up this year. And after visiting Media Day, a lot of talent seems to really be coming into this series from all ranks. We've got guys from Limited Cars moving up, Legends Car Drivers moving up. We've got guys that were running late model stocks at their local track committing to the tour now. Let's focus first on the late model stock side. Who do you see being a big threat or maybe even a surprise at Southern National? Well, I think on the late model stock car side, the one name that I'm thinking of both from a competition standpoint and from a notoriety standpoint is Josh Berry. You know, you've got Junior Motorsports as a team coming on board to support the Cars Tour, to support short track racing. They're good wherever they go. But Josh has pretty much said, and he said it during the media day a couple of weeks ago, that he wants to take that next step in his career. He wants to go from being a short tracker to being a full-time national touring guy. But in order to do that, he's got to beat the best in the country on the short track side. And for him, he said, that's cars. And that's not only for the competition you have there, like the Tommy Lemons, like the Deke McCaskills, like the Myatt Snyders. That's the, the variety of tracks, uh, but also the attention that it gets in media, uh, television. You know, working in NASCAR the way that I do is my full-time job. Uh, no other short track series or, or short track tour gets the sort of conversation or questions to me when I walk in the media center quite like tours. You know, I'll walk in on Sunday uh, for Martinsville after the Cars Tour race, and I guarantee you the likes of Bob Pockris and Jeff Gluck, they're going to ask me about what happened. They're going to ask how did a guy like Josh Berry do because he's got some name value. Dale Jr. will be talking about it in the garage, and I, I think that's a testament to what everything – um, that the Jack and Chris and those guys in the front office have done to make this series a really big deal. So uh, certainly we're all going to be watching Josh Berry, but also the guys that he's got to race and beat. Like a Deke McCaskill, a Myatt Snyder, a Tommy Lemons. And in fact, I know Myatt and Tommy have won some big races between our finale last year and our opener this year. I know they're really stoked. And then, of course, you've got some new guys coming in like, say, a Chase Purdy in the championship car, the 41 with Hawk McCall Motorsports, I think it's going to be very, very good. We thought last year was good, but I think this year is going to be even better on the late model stock side. On the super late model side, there's some ebb and flow there. Some guys moving on, like Christopher Bell, who now runs a truck series full-time, but there's a lot of big talent coming in behind him and really kind of a vacuum. Uh, who do you see being the surprises, and for that matter, the people to beat at Southern National? Yeah, the, the super late model side is a little bit harder to predict than the late model stock side because you know as most of the people watching this know the late model stock car is based in this region so everyone is already here and so i think from week to week in the cars tour you're largely going to see the same guys compete not only for individual races but also the championship uh, on the super late model side it's a national car uh, the people that run these cars and the Carolinas and Virginias can also run the same car in California and have ran in California. So it's a little bit harder to predict. But one guy I thought would have a better year last year, but didn't, but I think we'll kind of turn it around, will be Stephen Wallace. In many ways, he's kind of the face of the Super Late Model Tour, just from the perspective that uh, Jet Tools has invested a lot into the tour, into him, and into the Wallace Racing team. Uh, they won one race last year, but I think you're going to see a lot more wins this year. They were very competitive down at New Smyrna during the World Series of Asphalt, and I think you're going to see that same sort of thing carry over into the Cars Tour this year. You know, I think you're right, Matt. I think Steve is going to be very good. He, he showed us last year in that brand-new LFR chassis that he was going to be a threat to be reckoned with. He dominated Concord. He had a great car at Tri-County, but let's not discount a lot of those other guys. Kyle Grissom. Every series I've ever worked with him in, whether it's UARA or the Cars Tour or, or whatever else, always very quiet, but always very good. Do you think Kyle Grissom kind of sneaks under the radar, which, think about this, the guy finished second last year, and we're talking about him sneaking under the radar, but do you think Kyle Grissom maybe slides in to that championship spot this year? I think this is a very big race 
for Kyle Grissom. Uh, the reason why I kind of discounted him there in the initial question is that he's not entirely sure what he's doing this year. Um, he said that it's going to be important for him to either win this race at Southern National or have a great finish because he's probably going to focus on running most of his races in the Deep South. But if he can get off to a hot start in the Cars Tour, win a race, and it looks like he can contend for this championship, you might see him do double duty again like he did last year. And, you know, he absolutely can win this race. He can win any race that he ever goes to. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's a pro All-Star Series champion. He's won races in the Southern Super Series, contended in the CRA, and he is a national superstar when it comes to short track racing. So certainly you never discount him. And, you know, when you look at him, he's a physically imposing guy too. So I, I wouldn't discount anything that he can do inside the car or outside. I would agree with you there. And, of course, Zane Smith was great last year, and I'm sure he'll be good again this year in the Gary Crooks ride. And we could go on and on about this all day, Matt, I'm sure. But uh, people, I'm sure, want to have other things to do with uh, besides watch our program here. As cool as that might be, uh, we could sit here for six hours and talk about this because there is so much talent in the car store. But certainly I want to thank you, Matt, for stopping by. And do you have any other thoughts of things we should look at going into and coming out of Southern National this week? I would just encourage everyone to pick up this broadcast because I think the racing at this racetrack, particularly Southern National, is a great starting off point for fans who either know a little bit about short track racing or even not at all. Uh, certainly, I, I bring in a lot of the NASCAR audience, and they maybe don't know for sure if short track racing is for them. But I guarantee you, if you're a NASCAR fan that's looking forward to Martinsville this weekend, I would say to watch this race on Saturday night, too, because I think you're going to see a lot of the hard-nosed, beaten and banging action that you expect out of a place like Martinsville and Bristol, and a lot of familiar names, too. So I think we're going to have a good time on Saturday, and certainly I can't wait to be in the broadcast booth with you and call two good races for the super late models and the late model stocks. Very true. There are going to be two solid contests, and you're right, Matt. It's not just fans that are going to be looking, but a lot of the teams, a lot of the drivers – They've kind of already started to make their plans as well to get from Martinsville to Southern National and back. We saw it last year. Obviously, Kyle Busch had the broken leg, but he made the trip. David Gilliland made the trip. Jeff Burton, I believe. Well, he was there all day, actually. But a lot of drivers have a very, very keen interest on what happens at Southern National from the NASCAR ranks and really this entire tour. So it's going to be a fun weekend, no doubt. And I want to thank you in particular, Matt, for joining me here on our preview show and like you said, look forward to having you in our broadcast booth this weekend. Thank you, Tony. As you may have heard Matt and I allude to in the previous segment, a whole host of new teams and drivers will be joining us for the 2016 Cars Racing Tour season. Among them, Christian Eckes. Now, while Eckes is no stranger to the tour, his pairing is. He'll be driving a second Junior Motorsports late model stock car as a teammate to three-time race winner last year, Josh Berry. Also returning to the tour will be David Gilliland Racing, but they too will have a multiple driver lineup headlined by 2015 NASCAR K&M Pro Series most popular driver, Nicole Bihar. Also joining the tour this year will be limited late model graduate Jake Ruggles and U.S. Legends Cars graduate Tal Davidson. Another Legends car standout, Chase Purdy, will be returning to the 41 car of Lee McCall and Hawk McCall Motorsports. Yes, Brayton Hall's not in the seat. Chase Purdy has some very big shoes to fill as that team will return trying to defend their championship from 2015. And of course, we look forward to seeing most of the same competitors who were with us last season joining us this year and getting to know all the new ones in the sophomore season of the critically acclaimed and award-winning Cars Racing Tour. Thanks everybody for joining us for this first edition of Cars Tour today. We'll see you April 2nd for the season opener at Southern National. And if you cannot be there, don't worry. We've got you covered. Every single lap will be live on racefeedx.com. You're out of excuses. You better tune in or join us at Southern National this Saturday night. Until then, so long. We'll see you at the track.